what I want to talk about this afternoon is how a 100-year-old partnership is transforming itself for today's most competitive market by staying true to our enduring values. As many of you uh, may know, the partnership was started as an experiment, uh, an experiment in industrial democracy. And the founders, Bead and Lewis, always used to talk about, use the word experiment, almost this sort of sense of, almost sort of jeopardy and um, sort of sense of sort of excitement about the whole enterprise. Speed and Lewis, his father opened the eponymous store on Oxford Street, which I hope many of you are frequent uh, shoppers at. Um, and Speed and the Sun believed that profoundly that the, the people who drove the profit in the enterprise should share in the return. His father actually was uh, actually a much more sort of straight up and down, died in the wall capitalist, um, almost the sort of Jeff Bezos of the day, and, um, and indeed treated the workers so badly that they almost went on strike. So there were lots of, sort of photos of sort of the original employees outside Oxford Street sort of looking rather sort of cross and nervous. But his son had a very different, a profoundly different attitude to, to enterprise. And essentially, speed and behind his father's back over many decades worked to give, to gift, to donate, to hand over the business to workers, to partners as we are today. And the status of the partnership was, was sealed, in a sense, by two uh, trust settlements, one in 1929 and then book ended in 1950. And Speedon talked about the purpose of the partnership in the following way, and I'm going to quote, it's about the happiness of its members. Happiness. I always think it's a sort of very sort of compelling, almost sort of counterintuitive word for business. True happiness, he said, requires a sense of honest service to the general community and a sense of being of some use in the world. So that sense of the happiness of members, but also of that sort of social community, almost communitarian principle. And we've brought those words up to date. We had a 10-month um, process in the partnership last year to sort of look at how we modernised our purpose. And actually, we've, we've modernised by, as always in the partnership, stepping back to look at what has made us profoundly who we are today. And so today we talk about happier people, a happier business, a happier world. And the words may be different, but the sense of values and principles are just the same, a commitment to partners, to customers, to the world, to our local communities. And on top of that, we are, crucially, we're a democracy. So not just employee-owned, but a business that's run on democratic principles. So as chairman, I am accountable not to my partnership board, but I'm accountable to partners as represented through our council, the council of 60 elected partners or representatives, many of them frontline partners. And since 1919, the chairman, twice a year, has a session called Hold Into Account, but is essentially a session which is about being accountable for how the business is performing. And performing not just commercially, but performing in holistically in terms of all the things that make the partnership who we are today. We have a 35-page constitution, uh, which governs how the partnership operates. And the constitution can only be changed through democratic principles, through a vote by our partnership council. And Chris, Chris is somewhere, so the president, I always think Chris has the best title in the partnership. So Chris Earnshaw, who's president of the partnership council, who's got this most tremendously important role, facilitating, convening our council. We have, as probably the best known aspect of the partnership is our, um, is our bonus scheme that pays out the same proportion to every partner in the business, regardless of salary, regardless of seniority. We have no add-on profit-related bonuses for individuals or teams. We have no long-term incentive plans for executives. It's a very communitarian 
approach to pay. And today the partnership has got two of the best loved brands uh, in the UK, two of the best loved brands in the world, Waitrose and John Lewis. 20 million customers today, 70,000 partners today. And the strength of the two brands isn't somehow incidental to being a partnership, being incidental to being a membership organisation. It is directly and profoundly rooted in being an employee-owned business. You can trust us. You can trust us to provide impartial, independent advice. We're not perfect. But you can be confident that when, you, when you're served by a partner at your local Waitrose or John Lewis store, that we're trying to do the right thing. It's why even the most seasoned retailers sometimes talk about the partnership in almost quasi-religious terms, the soul of the partnership. You can't quite imagine that phrase being used about any other business. And it's why the business is, you know, almost, I sometimes think of ourselves almost as much a national institution as the BBC or the National Health Service. That sense in which the public or our customers feel that they own part of the business, have a stake in the business. And you can see that in some of the sort of energy around the public debate this year about the future of the partnership. And that's an extraordinarily privileged position to be in as a business. As I said before, Sweden described the partnership as an ongoing experiment. And it speaks to the fact that an unconventional business, a business as unconventional as ours, needs to be continually adapting, innovating, and finding ways for improved efficiency to survive. And Sweden himself was a, was a great entrepreneur. He opened and closed businesses in South Africa. He bought Waitrose initially because it was going to be the catering arm of a new hotels business that he didn't quite get off the ground. He bought regional department stalls ahead of the Second World War, sort of anticipating that the London stalls might be bombed. So he had that sense of sort of entrepreneurism and innovation which continues today. We joined forces with Acada at a time when nobody quite believed they'd want to have their food delivered straight to their homes. We bought Buy.com, uh, the first dot-com crash, those many, many years ago, which became uh, the root and the foundations for John Lewis Online. We set up the UK's first ever automated warehouse. And then driven by a desire to take the partnership model nationwide, the business then entered a period of very rapid expansion between 2000 and 2015. The number of partners went um, increased by about 40,000 to 90,000 people. John Lewis almost doubled the number of stores from 25 to 43 to 50 at its peak. Waitrose went from 126 branches to 336 branches, including the acquisition of about 19 Safeway stores. And that growth was financed through two public bonds, uh, one payable in uh, early 2025, one in 2034, e each of them of £300 million. And sales grew. Sales grew strongly from about £4 billion to over £10 billion, but our profits stayed the same. Uh, and you'll remember the time retail margins were hit by the entry of the uh, grocery discounters, Aldi and Lidl. And it was also the time at which everybody got an iPhone and a shop in your pocket, and it meant that all the rise of online hit margins in the business. And for us, it meant that profit per partner started to fall significantly. Over this period, the partnership bonus averaged about 14%, just under 15%, while our net debt rose from a billion pounds to 3.7 billion pounds, and our debt ratio widened from 3.6 times cash to 4.8 times cash. So there then followed a period of austerity, a period of belt tightening for the business between 2015 
and 2000. The closure of our defined benefit scheme, tough decision for partners, a lower bonus at that stage, averaging 5% from the days of 14% investment reined in in order to preserve cash and strengthen the balance sheet. A fundamental reorganisation of the business, moving Waitrose and John Lewis from lines of business into group-wide structures to improve efficiencies and create more synergies. And then back to today. So the partnership continues to transform in a highly competitive but also a highly unusual market. So I had about uh, five weeks in the business um, before the pandemic hit. And um, for all of us, we've had three years characterised by two once-in-a-generation events. The global pandemic, but also a cost-of-living crisis that uh, this country hasn't seen since the oil price shocks of the early 1970s. And regrettably, many retailers did not make it through this most turbulent of periods. The John Lewis partnership has come through, and we have a clear plan for the future. A five-year partnership plan, which began in 2021, will get the partnership back to sustainable profit. It aims for a broadly-based business with brilliant retail at our core, built around the qualities which have always defined our brands. So excellent customer service, quality, and high ethics with significant focus in the last three years on improving the business fundamentals, the foundations of the business. So some difficult decisions to tackle excess space. Some of you will know we closed 16 John Lewis, John Lewis stores, very difficult, 13 Waitrose stores in the last few years. We've refreshed and restarted the store update program, 41 Waitrose stores updated so far, more to do. We've retired, never know any undersold, a price a promise that did not work in an online world, did not apply to online purchases. And we're investing in better understanding our customers so that we can serve them in a more personalized and more tailored way. We've reduced our cost base, some tough decisions again. We've made efficiency savings of about 300 million pounds so far. And we believe there's about another £600 million of efficiency opportunity to go. And then step by step, we're returning John Lewis and Waitrose to lines of businesses supported by group functions. Paying a bonus when affordable, but also not forgetting who we are. So almost a 1,000 partners, I'm proud to say, are gaining new skills on apprenticeships. And the partnership has made a new long-term commitment to provide jobs and skills for young people who are leaving the care system, a community who are one of the most profoundly disadvantaged in the UK, more likely to be homeless than to go to university. And we've got, I'm proud to say, 50 partners who are working in our business who've come through a very difficult background. And I want the partnership to be a place of opportunity in the same way that Timpson's is a great place of opportunity for ex-offenders. I want every young person who's been brought up in care to believe that the John Lewis partnership is their home. For our customers, John Lewis and Waitrose are continuing to drive hard on quality, on service and on ethics. Adapting, as we're adapting, as shopping habits continue to evolve post-COVID and as customers are obviously continuing to rush for value as the cost of living continues to bite. Many of our customers are um, prioritising travel, they're wanting to go on holiday, they're wanting to take days out, spending a bit less on hospitality, and, um, uh, and eating out is sort of starting to wane in recent months. They're cost conscious, but they're also prepared to spend on things that they believe matter. Take John Lewis. So the high street is starting to come back. 55% of John Lewis purchases are now online at its pandemic peak. It was 70%. We've launched 250 new brands in the last year. We've got new brands like Sir and Mag and & Bone and Virtue, Fashion Rental with the likes of and other stories, but also new emerging brands that we're trying to support, the likes of Elliot. 
improved styling and design of our own brand, fashion and of home. Refreshing half our stores, investing in new family spaces and investing in new kids' brands as well. Partners, service is so important as an employee-owned business, receiving the training they deserve through a new school of service. And at the same time, we know there's more for the business to do to get our, con our service really consistently excellent. And Waitrose, so customers are shopping mostly in branch, but an important minority, about 13%, are still shopping online from 20% at the height of the pandemic. Waitrose already with the highest animal welfare standards of any major grocer in the world, which we are underpinning even with the cost pressures by continued commitment to our UK farmers, continuing to believe that they should be paid fairly. And we're sending out bolder messages to our customers about just what makes the brand special in terms of sustainability and sourcing. Now, the only major grocer with a full fish meat and deli counter that's left in the UK with new exclusive sustainable brands like Plants by Ella introduced and a new £100 million price investment, even better value with no compromise on values. Waitrose being more available to more customers through tie-ups with partnerships, the likes of Deliveroo and Shell and Dobbies. But we're more than just retail going back to Speed, and Speed and always envisaged the partnership as a variety of businesses, in his words, a variety of businesses operating in different sectors to manage the risk of one business failing. And over time, the partnership will continue to diversify, expanding into financial services, which we've been in for 20 years, developing a new build to rent business with the support of Aberdeen. Partnership built its first property in 1944. So again, we're stepping forward, but also by going back to our roots. Areas that we know not only have a track record, but we know our customers trust us. Um, I wanted to touch a bit on funding, which I know will, will probably be a theme for many employee owned businesses or those of us thinking about becoming membership organizations. As an employee-owned business, the partnership for decades has funded itself through a combination of the cash we generate through our own trading, through asset sales, but also through debt. And obviously, a, a conventional business would be able to access shareholder funding. As a member organisation, that route is obviously not open to us because our partners are effectively our shareholders. But for many years, we've found creative ways with other companies using some of their capital, but also some of their expertise to provide new services and to fund the growth of the business. Ocado is a case in point. And the current partnership plan, the partnership plan for transformation, assumes that we continue with that same funding approach. But there are clearly risks, not least given the uncertainty of today's economic environment. And the scale of investment needed by the partnership in areas like technology or the Waitrose supply chain is clearly greater after that period of rapid growth and then the period of austerity. So from my perspective, the tragedy would be to walk past what needs to be done to ensure the partnership has the fuel that it needs to invest, to transform and to grow. If the partnership finds itself unable to fund the plan by itself, the board could look at whether in external investment was needed and feasible. But any arrangement would clearly have to be fully aligned with our trust settlements, which guarantee employee ownership and the partner's share in the profits. Employee ownership for us is a given. What makes us special isn't a coincidence of our being a partnership it's because we're a partnership. So in conclusion, the, the partnership we're modernising, but we're modernising the way in which we are staying, trying to stay true to our enduring, our historic values. We're unapologetic about what we stand for. That's what our customers, our partners expect. A business that's built on, you know, maybe I can use the words kind of capitalism. Um, sometimes called socialist capitalism or responsible capitalism, adapting to the modern era. No business can stand still. 
the road isn't easy. Nobody who looks at the world at the moment, everybody knows that. But the things that we stand for are worth fighting for. And I could not be more confident about a sunny and successful future.